The Ramchal say what we mention, what we mention with, with speaking about the, this divine divine light and divine and the absence of the divine light which creates darkness, right? Uh, so it's a, it goes all the way to the root of the of the roots of the things. Meaning, if a person does so many bad things over here, when it sends back to the upper world, it can actually goes as high as the roots of the things. Meaning, it eliminates completely the good influence, not just part of it. What we mentioned about the good and the bad, and the war between the brain and materialism, and all the correction or destroying the world, all of that, some powers are on the way up and some are on the way down, all of that is determined based on the people that were created by Hashem. So obviously, whatever you see in the world, you cannot blame anyone but people, human beings, Jews and non-Jews. Jews, unlike the Gentiles, affecting the world in a much bigger format, for good and also for bad. It's not only one-way street. Same thing a Jew with good deeds and good things in the Torah that he learns can bring a lot of blessing to the world or to the place where he is. When he commits certain sins, it brings a horrible situation to the world. By the Goyim, they also bring good and bad, depending on their action, obviously. But it's in a limited way. Meaning, the chosen people that have this divine soul and blessing and the Torah of God and a mission to bring light to the world can default on their mission and the consequences will be much more severe than when a Gentile default on his mission. Same thing when a Gentile is very righteous, he brings good to the world, but not in the same level when a righteous Jew brings good to the world. So the same way that the reward and the punishment by the Jews are much bigger than the Gentiles, for good or for bad, depending on what they choose to do. The same thing the next world. The, the heaven of the Gentiles is wonderful, but it's not as high as the, as the heaven of the Jews. But the mission of the Jews is a lot harder than the mission of a Gentile. So everything is according to the effort. The more effort, the more influence. The less effort, the less influence. There are many, many different levels in this, the Ramchal said. In Kohot Ara, in the power of evil, as we mentioned, and the influence of it to the world. We, all, we usually call them by certain names. One, Tum'ah, impurity. Second, Choshech, darkness. Three, Zohama. Zohama means dirt. Place is dirty. Or we call them Chol. There's Kodesh and there's Chol. There is Tahor, there is Tameh. There is Or, there is Choshech. It's clean, Naki, and Zohama. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Top. When Hashem sent this light to the world, what do we call this light? Kedusha, holiness. Tahara, purity. Or, light, blessing, bracha. All these positive words. That's what we want. We want Kedusha, we want Tahara, we want Or, we want bracha. Wonderful, wonderful influence. When we go to the small details, we will find how Hashem runs the world precisely to the smallest detail. Meaning it's like a tree that has a root. Here in this world, the root comes from the bottom to the top, right? You have a root, the root of the tree inside the land, and then it has the, the stem, and then you have the branches, and then you have the leaves, or fruits. Over there, it's the opposite. You have, it's like an opposite tree. You have the root up there, and you have the stem, and you have the branches, and you have the leaves, and you have the fruits, and it reflects down to the world. It's like fruits falling here. One, another one, and another one. The more they fall into the world, the better they bring blessing and light into the world. So, to the smallest detail, which is leaves and this, and you have the main root, and then what comes out of it? There is not one thing, as big as it is, or as small as it is, that doesn't have a root in the upper world. HaKadosh Baruch Hu supervises every detail that comes down from the upper world into this world. Of course, there are rules. There's regular nature when it comes to it, but it's supervised to the smallest detail. So the Ramchal explains, every one of these details and how they come down to the world is supervised. Since human, the human being is different than all the species that Hashem made, material and spiritual species, meaning even angels and demons and other things which are spiritual, but the human being is different than everything Hashem made. He's unique. What makes him unique? What makes him unique is upoel umenia velo nifal. All angels are activated by Hashem. They don't have their own existence. Whatever Hashem allows them, they do. Whatever Hashem programs them to do. Animals, the same thing. Demons, the same thing. The only one who can actually be a boss of himself and do whatever he wants with no one forcing him to do it is the human being. How is the will determined? Based on many things. How much fear you have from heaven. If you learn a lot of Torah, you have Yirat Shamayim. If you have Yirat Shamayim, you activate yourself in a positive way, not to get Hashem upset. If you don't have Yirat Shamayim, you activate yourself in a, in a terrible way. And all you bring is a disaster to the world. But, so we have act... And we have activate and not activated. Person is acting. And, you know, there we have 
animals and demons and angels that are activated, Hashem activates them, and we have the human being that is activating himself. Therefore, a person will have to be responsible for every detail of his actions. Because every act by, by the human being will reflect consequences to his life and to his environment according to the fruit of his actions. Not just his actions, the consequences of his actions. Don't be politically correct liberal faker. You're only allowed to love achicha. Ve'avtali re'acha kamocha. The Gemara say, re'acha la mitzvot. Your colleague in keeping mitzvot. Not someone who hates mitzvot. Not someone who hates Torah. Not someone who fights to close yeshivot. Those kind of people you're allowed to love. Righteous Gentiles, Rabbi Chaim Vital say, you have to love them also. Why? He fulfills his mission in life. It's not an anti-Semite. He keeps the seven laws of Noah. It's a righteous Gentile. I love him. Why not? Wicked Gentiles. You can, you can hate him, of course. Wicked Jew. You can hate him also. Who to love and who to hate, the Torah is very specific. Loving the wicked, it's a sin. Hating the righteous is a sin. That's what the Torah say. Everyone who has mercy on the wicked guarantee to be cruel to the righteous. Why? Because when you get Hashem angry and you have mercy on the wicked, Hashem will punish you measure for measure that when the, when the mercy is needed for the righteous, you will be cruel to the righteous. Just because you were nice to the wicked. You understand? Like a seesaw. When the wrong side is up, the right side is down. When the right side is up, the wrong side is down. They both cannot be up or down. One is up when the other one is down. That's what life is all about. Same thing over here. 